Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Quran Weekly. Welcome back to the Superstar Series. This is your brother Omar Suleiman. Inshallah ta'ala, today we're going to start with a very special Sahabi whose father was a very special man. The father of Sa'id ibn Zayd ibn Amr ibn Nufayl. A man who understood from the very start that you know what, there's something wrong with this entire picture that we see here with the Quraysh in Mecca, with all these idols and things of that sort. And someone who rejected shirk at an early age and who argue with, argued with his people. He was the nephew of Al-Khattab, the father of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he consistently argued against his people until Al-Khattab persecuted him and beat on him. And Zayd radiallahu ta'ala anhu tried to go to other places to try to find the truth. Now, Zayd passed away before the Prophet ﷺ received revelation. So Sa'id ibn Zayd, he asked the Prophet ﷺ, he says, with my father, you know what happened with him. You know who he was. What is his situation? And the Prophet ﷺ said, I have seen on the day of judgment that when every nation stands behind its Prophet, Zayd ibn Amr ibn Nufayl radiallahu ta'ala anhu will be standing as a nation on his own. Now Sa'id radiallahu anhu was a very special individual. He accepted Islam right from the beginning at the age of 19 years old. In fact, the scholars say that he accepted Islam even before Darul Arqam. His teacher was Khabbab ibn al-Arat radiallahu ta'ala anhu and he married Fatima bint al-Khattab, the sister of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And Fatima radiallahu anha, according to many of the scholars, was the second woman to accept Islam after Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. Now, what makes this Sahabi so special? What makes Sa'id so special? You know, Sa'id radiallahu anhu was someone who loved service. He loved to be serving with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He loved the feeling of struggle. He loved the dust on his face, the sand on his face. In fact, he said radiallahu ta'ala anhu that to witness a battle alongside the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and to have dirt covering your face, to be in the heat of the battle is more beloved than living a lifetime of good deeds, even if you live the life of Nuh alayhi salam. So he witnessed every battle alongside the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, except for one, and that was the battle of Badr. Now you might be wondering, why would he miss Badr if he accepted Islam even before Dar al-Arqam in Mecca? And the answer to that is that he and Talha ibn Ubaidillah radiallahu anhu were sent to Asham to scout, to scout uh, where Quraysh was attacking from. By the time they made it back to the Muslims, the Battle of Badr had already been completed and so Rasulullah still counted Talha and Sa'id as the veterans or from the people of Badr, the veterans of Badr. So he witnessed every battle with the Prophet and in fact he had a reputation. Even throughout Abu Bakr and Umar's time, Sa Sa'id was known as the guy that would always charge first in battle. And in fact, he was Qa'id al-Fursan, he was the head of the knights in most battles. So he was always the guy that would, charge, that would charge forth. And you can imagine, subhanAllah, when the Muslims were usually outnumbered, three to one, four to one, five to one, when they were usually you know, in a very, very low situation, how much fearlessness that had to take, and subhanAllah, how much courage that had to take to be able to be the first one to always charge. Now Sa'id radiallahu anhu in particular, he served in the battle of Yarmouk under Khalid ibn Walid radiallahu anhu, which was one of the fiercest battles that the Muslims ever had. And Khalid radiallahu anhu, he appointed Sa'id radiallahu anhu as the head of the qalb, the center of the army in Yarmouk. And Sa'id radiallahu anhu, on that day, he did something very powerful. He called out to Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah. He said, O Abu Ubaidah, I have, I have become determined to be a martyr today. And so he said to Abu Ubaidah, he said, what would you like me to tell the Prophet wasallam if I meet him? So Abu Ubaidah said to Sa'id, he said, if you see the Prophet wasallam, give him my salam and give the salam of the Muslims to him. وَقُلْ لَهُ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ And say to him, O Messenger of Allah, جَزَاكَ اللَّهُ عَنَّا خيرا. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you on our behalf. وَإِنَّا قَدْ وَجَدْنَا مَا وَعَدْنَا, رب ما وعدنا رَبُّنَا حَقَّا And we have found what our Lord has promised us to be true. SubhanAllah, we have found that our Lord has promised us to be true. And what he was referring to was the spread of Islam to all over the world. And Sa'id radiallahu anhu, he says, on that day, fear was removed from my heart. I never had fear in my heart again. And SubhanAllah, although he was determined that day uh, uh, for a shahada, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed him to survive the battle of Yarmouk. 
And in fact, Sa'id radiallahu anhu was responsible for the army that went to Damascus to Asham. And finally, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu actually appointed Sa'id ibn Zayd as the governor of Damascus, as the governor of Asham. Now I want you to think about this for a moment. A man like Sa'id ibn Zayd, who had been serving his entire life, a man like Sa'id ibn Zayd, who was used to being, who was used to being, you know, covered in dirt, who was used to being in the battlefield, you know, how must it have felt to be in Damascus out of all places? Damascus at that time, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to restore its izza, Allahumma ameen. Damascus at that time was the most developed society in the world. It had, you know, large, it had high buildings, it had beautiful gardens, it was known for its, for its progress, it was known for, for its affluence. And in fact, Sa'id radiallahu ta'ala anhu would live in the palace of Caesar. Now Sa'id radiallahu anhu, who was used to always being in the battlefield and used to always having his face covered in dirt, Sa'id radiallahu anhu would walk out every single day and he would walk on the balcony of that palace and he would look out for three months and he would say to himself, I didn't sign up for this. You know, I don't want this. SubhanAllah, this isn't what I love doing. I love, to, I love service. You know, I love being in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so he sent a letter to Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he said, O oh, Amir al muminin I am not going to abandon the struggle, or I'm not going to leave the struggle to you and the rest of the companions while I sit in this palace. So whenever you receive this letter, know that I am on my way to you, and please send to this post someone who is more, someone who is more, or, or someone to whom this post is more befitting, because I can't take this. And so Sa'id radiallahu anhu wanted to remain in constant service to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he didn't want that luxury, he did not want you know, to be sitting in that palace. And subhanAllah, we learned something very powerful and profound from that. Sa'id radiallahu anhu teaches us that as Muslims, we should always love to be in the field. And what I mean by that is I mean we should always love to be amongst those that are serving the homeless. We should always love to be the guys that are cleaning up the bathroom, the people that are serving the food, the people that are doing the dirty work, right? The stuff that nobody else wants to do. We should love to always be in, this, in, in a sense of service. So you think about this for yourself. When you're sitting in a gathering, when you're in a masjid, when you're in a convention, wh wherever you are, when you're with your family in your home, are you in service or are you sitting comfortably? As a believer, you recognize that you don't have time to waste, so you want to get as many good deeds as possible. And so Sa'id radiallahu anhu you know, continued his entire life, although he could have relaxed and talked about how great his life was to the rest of the companions, to the tabi'een, to his children, he decided to continue in service to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now there's a twist to all of this. Sa'id radiallahu ta'ala anhu in the year 673 actually would die without being in service. So Sa'id radiallahu anhu went to Salat al-Fajr one morning and he seemed completely fine. He came back home after Salat al-Fajr, he put his hands behind his head and he passed away peacefully as he took a, a nap. Sa'id ibn Abi Waqqas and Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma would be the people that would take the body of Sa'id and, Sa and they would wash him and they would pray on him. And both of them tell a very beautiful, uh, you know, tell us of a very beautiful account, which was that whenever they came to perfume the body of Sa'id ibn Zayd with al hanut to put perfume on him, they found that his body already had the sweetest of smells. SubhanAllah. And it was as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was telling us and saying to Sa'id radiallahu anhu, your service has been accepted. Even if you didn't die in the field, if you, even if you didn't die with dirt covering your face, when your intention is to serve, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will surely accept your service. So next time, make sure that you take full advantage of your situation. Make sure that you are the one that's out there and taking care of the people and striving in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah to grant us the quality of service and to accept our service for His sake. Allahumma ameen. See you next week, inshallah, as we, as we continue in the Superstar series. Jazakumullahu khayran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.